what do you do when you've been using a workflow for almost 10 years and the developers of the software you use to achieve that workflow sets out on an entirely different path? You can certainly abandon your workflow to adapt to the new paradigm. And many have done exactly this to many softwares over the years. What choice did you really have? Or you can abandon the software entirely and forge a new path with other software that does exactly what you want. Or as close as you can get to it anyway. This was the story of change, refinement, and gnome. We explored that in a previous history delve, and even though the developers and users continued on with GNOME 3 and then 40 with some consternation since 2011, something was brewing in the background. A third option. Instead of adapting your workflow or learning an entirely new one, if you're astute and talented enough, you can pick up the old software and keep it alive. It's all open source, or GPL in this case. After all, this is the strange yet inevitable tale of Mate. Ever since its announcement in 2008, Descent over Gnome's decision to reinvent the wheel and eventually abandon the Gnome 2 paradigm altogether had been growing. Year after year, as GNOME 3 started to take shape leading up to its release in 2011, a steady chorus of Not My Desktop rang louder and louder. Most would stick to GNOME 2 through 2009, 2010, and some of 2011, but for those that were resistant to change, the release of GNOME 3 on April 6, 2011 was the turning point. It was undeniable now that GNOME 2.32 would be the last familiar version of GNOME. For some, like those on Fedora or users of GNOME on Arch, it would mean a decision would need to be made. For the rest, the distributions would be the bulwark against the impending change for a while, but one by one, distribution after distribution, GNOME 3 was avoided or adopted. And for the distributions that adopted it, like Debian, RHEL, and others, it was accept or abandon. Still others, like Ubuntu, went their own way with Unity. In June of 2011, a light at the end of the tunnel for those still clinging to GNOME 2 started to shine. That light was a post, originally on the Arch Linux forums. Perberos, hailing from Argentina, posted, Hello, everyone. I've made a GNOME 2 fork, and I've called it Mate. Perberos described the fork as, The Mate desktop environment, a non-intuitive and unattractive desktop for users using traditional computing desktop metaphor, also known as the GNOME 2 fork. It was initially available only through the Arch user repository, but that was enough to spark interest from others, both users and developers. When you scale it back a little, Mate at the outset was simple. It really began life as a simple migration script that replaced occurrences of GNOME, Matacity, and Nautilus, among others, with their counterparts, Mate, Marco, and Kaha. But even this early on, you got Perberos's influence in naming the native software to Mate, with Kaha being box, as in the thing you put stuff in. You know, like a file manager of sorts. It didn't take long before the media began picking up on this scrappy continuation of GNOME 2. Articles began popping up in Pharonix in August and others like InGeek in the days to come. In the following months, Perberos attempted to grow the community by posting the same announcement again, but on the Ubuntu forums in October, and again in the Linux Mint forums in November. Each post garnered support, both from users of other desktops and GNOME refugees that wanted to return and use Mate full-time for the foreseeable future. We've been saying it Mate all this time, but what did it really mean? And 
why do you pronounce it that way? Proudly scrawled across the About Mate desktop page was a quote. The name Mate, pronounced Mate, comes from Herba Mate, a species of holly native to subtropical South America. Its leaves contain caffeine and are used to make infusions and a beverage called Mate. By the end of 2011, the pieces were set. Perberos, Clement Lefebvre, Stefano Carapestas, and Steve Zesch were the founders. Clem led the charge with the inaugural blog post, Introducing Mate Desktop. It began by lamenting the fact that Gnome 2 is no longer available, but Mate has arrived to carry on the torch. Our top priority is to improve Mate and for it to be on par in terms of features and stability with GNOME 2.32. We'll port themes, applets, and applications which were developed for GNOME 2 and help developers port their applications to this new desktop. Its project goals? Keep the traditional desktop metaphor and be an alternative for lower-end hardware. While not a true release date, as those tend to happen much later than the packaging itself, we can see that the first mostly usable Mate desktop version 1.1 was packaged on December 9th, 2011. We can also, at this time, see the evidence of the initial migration script, the author's file that would have listed the original lib gnome desktop and gnome about authors, listed them as lib Mate desktop and Mate about authors. You can see similar changes in the hacking and readme files. Curiously, in this and some future releases, a file named nyancat.gif was included in the Mate about directory, which didn't exist in its gnome about predecessor. And yes, it's that nyancat. By 2012, the four developers listed, and quite a few others, including other developers and many testers, had made advancement after advancement until Mate 1.2 in April. The first thing we checked was whether or not the GNOME and Mate authors were properly credited, and they all were. With Perberos up top and Steve Zesch and Stefano Carapestos below, Clem focused on packaging, so it looks like he missed the cutoff for addition. And of course, the GNOME developers were listed as GNOME developers again. Aside from authorship, many of the odd GNOME Mate mix-ups were fixed. Kaha got an undo function and Pulse Audio was fully supported. This is also when Moso, a fork of a la carte, the menu editor, was released. Moso means waiter in English. All of this on top of the Marco the Spanish word meaning frame, window manager. Other software was eventually included with special names like Atril or Lectern, a document viewer, Engrampa or Staple, the file archiver, Pluma or Pen, the text editor, and other non-Spanish named applications like Eye of Mate to view images, the Mate calculator, and the Mate system monitor. All of the native Mate software was forked from their GNOME counterparts. One thing we noticed is that the About window for Mate seemed to change up for every major release, with some of them being a little cheeky, so we thought we'd document the changes. The first official, 1.2.0, about read, Mate includes most of what you see on your computer, including the File Manager, Document Viewer, Image Viewer, Menus, and many applications. By May, Salix had been one of the very first distributions to headline Mate, and not just stick it in their development repos repositories or simply mention it as available on their forum. And in their best version too, version 13.37, the latest of releases. Following up the release in April was another in July. Mate 1.4 was intended to clean up remnants of issues left over from Mate 1.2 and it did pretty well. In late December, noticing the popularity of Mate and the need for a more traditional paradigm, the GNOME team created GNOME Flashback 
to continue work on the GNOME fallback mode that still used Metacity and the GNOME panel. They invited those on the Mate team to join, but this history would have been a very short highlight in the GNOME history had the Mate developers actually accepted that offer. The new and old GTK alternatives, GNOME 3, GNOME Classic, GNOME Flashback, LXDE, and XFCE, while they were good and saw varied adoption, just weren't GNOME 2. In 2013, the developers, seeing the need to onboard folks that were interested in developing for the desktop, came up with Mate University, a place to learn to create things like file manager extensions, text editor, and image editor plugins, and panel applets for the Mate desktop. Their confidence was growing, and in April, it showed with the release of Mate 1.6, released on the 2nd, because Mate was no joke. The about read, GNOME 2 was the most popular Linux desktop, but it's no longer available. Mate is here to provide that same desktop to you. For the team, it was considered internally as GNOME 2.34, the true successor to the last version, GNOME 2.32. And to add to the professionality of the release, NeonCat.gif was no longer included. A truly dark day for Linux desktop historians like us. Another testament to the fact that Mate was a serious desktop with real aspirations of not changing much. But this was Mate's strength. Many of the strongest distros at the time had either added Mate as official or were beginning to work toward that goal. And it wasn't just Linux. In late 2013, GhostBSD, after dabbling mostly in GNOME since its inception, but a little LXDE2, transitioned to the Mate desktop at version 1.6 by default to maintain the same look and feel as their original releases. This also meant that availability in FreeBSD was there too. Now that Mate was truly standing on its own, GNOME had noticed, and the two collaborated to reduce the need for forks of already working software like GNOME Keyring, Gweather, and others. Many, many contributors that were eyeing Mate needed lots of legwork to actually cross the finish line and get them included into their favorite distributions. Stefano had pulled strings earlier in the year to have Mate included in Debian. Martin Wimpress had taken over AUR duties in Archland to swing the packages directly into the community repository. And many others were working tirelessly in their corners of the Linux distribution communities to do the needful. And by the end of the year and into 2014, Mate was officially available in Arch, Debian, Fedora, Linux Mint, OpenSUSE, Sabayon, Salix, and Ubuntu. Starting in 2014 with Perberos' direct support slipping, Stefano Carapestas stepped up to lead the team. And really, there are no huge developments in Mate. Its purpose was to stay the same and refine what was already there rather than shift paradigms or rethink the way computing should be done, especially on Linuxes and in the Unixes. So the following versions are mostly just iterative quality jumps. And not only is that okay, it's the point. The Mate 1.8 release in March took that usual step forward. It's about said, Mate provides an intuitive and attractive desktop to Linux users using traditional metaphors. Mate was updated in September to fix various bugs, and Martin Wimpress took over the release announcement duties. He also released the very first version of Ubuntu Mate, and along with Linux Mint, did the bulk of real changing in Mate so the desktop itself could stay familiar. In 2015, there were two releases. One in June, version 1.10, with an about that read, Mate is the continuation of GNOME 2. Hundreds of people have contributed code to GNOME since it was started in 1997. Many more have contributed in other important ways, including translations, documentation, and quality assurance. And another, 1.12, in November. The About Here read, Mate is a free, usable, stable, accessible desktop environment for the Unix-like family of operating systems. This also marked the point at which Mate had real, live, 
non-experimental GTK3 support, which gave the developers much more runway to continue doing their slow and steady thing. 2016 also saw a couple of releases, 1.14 in April and 1.16 released in September. The about stagnated a little here, but they sort of picked up again later on. And just when you thought the adoption phase of Mate was over, also in September, there was some movement. Born of the Oracle Solaris controversy was a new Unix flavor, Open Indiana. It was a BSD founded by none other than Debian founder Ian Murdoch, based on Open Solaris and later Illumios. But the September release of 1.16 was cutting things a little close, so they stuck with Mate 1.14. 2017 saw one release, Mate 1.18, released in March. It marked full GTK3 plus adoption, meaning every bit of GTK2 code could be, and in most cases had been, dropped. Almost a full year later in February, Mate 1.20 was released and brought with it high DPI support with dynamic detection and scaling no logout, login required, and Atril was completely reworked. 2019 was another single release year. Mate 1.22 was released in March and marked the first big step forward in support. Back end, of course. Don't mess with a good thing. The Mate panel had been reworked to work in Wayland. And as always, a slew of small improvements to make things iteratively better. The about changed again, but this one was just a rehash of Mate 1.6's about page. Hmm. 2020 saw one release as well. Mate 1.24 released in February. And you might think, this is becoming a thing. Yearly releases. Well, hold on to your hats. We have a rough ride ahead. Another new old about. This time, a rehash of 1.10. And you can go back to see what that was. At the beginning of this history, the release in August of 2021 was the last release. Mate 1.26. But it saw lots of Wayland progress. Atril, Pluma, Terminal, and the system monitor were all Wayland ready and lots of other modernization. But then there was a lull. Outward facing, at least. Posts dried up on the blog, and news and updates were far and few between for the next long while. It was so quiet, in fact, that between 2022 and 2024, post after post on forum and Reddit alike were created with a similar thought. Was Mate dead? Was it dying? Should I even bother? Internally, of course, that wasn't the case. 1.27 was released as a development branch of 1.28 and saw three additional releases in 2023 and another in 2024. 1.26 continued on as well with two releases in 2023. And that really didn't mean there wasn't any drama either, however closed off it was. On September 12th of 2023, Clem had his part ownership of Mate removed. And he had this to say. I no longer co-own the Mate project. I said something Wolfgang Ulbrich disagreed with on September 12th. He removed me from the team that day. The next day, he took away my ownership of the project on GitHub.com. We were both trusted as co-owners along with Martin Winterpress and Stefano Carapestas. To all of our surprise, especially Dan and I, because we ended up having to postpone this very episode, there was another release in February of 2024 while we were sitting out. On February 12th, 2024, Mate 1.28, after three years, was released. And 1.28.1 was released shortly after to fix issues with Mason packaging. Looking to the future, Wayland support for Mate apps is almost there, with the Mate Control Center being the only package without Wayland support. And it's almost like it was planned that both Dan and I had to sit out. 
Because had we actually recorded when we intended on recording, we would have missed this particular part of the history by one day. By one day. But as fortune would have it, we're here to tell you Mate 1.28 is released. And at this point, every single media outlet that would normally report a release like this has said absolutely nothing. All right, you can catch all the great topics as they unfold on our Lemmy subreddit or news channel or on Discord. We've got, uh, you know, we, we dump the news right to your face in, in Lemmy and our subreddit and Discord. Um, you know, the stuff that we curate that we think everybody here will love. So you can catch all that there. But you can also interact with us on, you know, Mastodon, Telegram, Matrix, and, you know, we do streaming things on Twitch, and, you know, we've got a Twitter as well, that we, uh, X, whatever you're calling that. We've, we've got a presence there as well, so you can catch all those things, linuxuserspace.show slash the thing, and you'll get there. <laughs>